Hi everybody! Hope you've had a good week. Today's painting has got a bit of a story behind it. It's actually the first painting or picture, not all of them will be paintings, in a series where I'm going to be trying to celebrate some of my favourite moth species. I feel that moths get quite a bad rep. Um, they get sidelined as the dull, plain, ugly stepsister to the butterfly. But I believe that's a really unfair evaluation. There are so many moth species which are just as beautiful, if not more so, than their flashy sisters. And even some of the neutral coloured ones have beautiful markings. So I thought that I would do a little project that tries to bring together some of my favourite species. Today's painting we will start with a familiar one that I think many people may think of when they think of beautiful moths. And that is the American Moon Moth, or otherwise known as just the Lunar Moth. They belong to the Saturnidae family of moths, which contains some of the largest and most spectacular moth species, including the Atlas moth, and also the Indian, African and Spanish moon moths. The American moon moth has long hind wing tails, as you can see in the painting, and they can range in colour from a yellowish green through to a pale bluish green, depending on the location they're found as well as the season. The American moon moth, as the name suggests, is widespread throughout the USA, which I am quite jealous of because I'd love to see these in the wild and being in the UK chances are that's not gonna happen anytime soon so I will probably just have to find a butterfly and moth house in a nearby zoo that have these so that I can see them alive and flying around instead of pinned to a board in a museum anyway so back to the painting it's all in watercolor I did use some gouache at the end in white to try and bring back some of the the white in the white fairy bodies of the American moon moth but basically this is just made of lots of layers of very translucent very thin watercolor which allows the light to actually go through the paint and then reflect back off of the white paper which gives it a really nice luminosity and a brightness which is a really nice characteristic to using watercolors and is really the reason why I love using them as much as possible Right here I would like to apologise for the missing clips. My camera decided it was going to run out of battery and not tell me. Either way, all I did at this point was add another layer of the green and the yellow onto the wings and finish off putting the purple on and then take the masking fluid off. I also had masking fluid on the bottom edge of the top two wings but when I took it off it was just too stark. The edges were too sharp and it was too white so what I did was to try and match that area to the surrounding greens as best as possible and then I went back over them with a white wash to still have that white but to allow it to feather in a little bit better.
this point is when I'm starting to add my white gouache. It's a Winston Newton designer's gouache in titanium white, no, in zinc white, to add in those white colorations onto the wings, but also to add in the highlights on the edge of the hind wings, the tails, where it folds over and catches the light right on the ends. It really helps to bring it to life a little bit and not look, make it look so flat. I know there are people out there who will think that using gouache to bring back your whites is cheating, it's not really watercolour, blah blah blah. To be fair, I really don't care about anything like that. I have an image in my head about what I want to achieve, what I want something to look like. And as long as my piece is archival at the end of the day, as long as it's going to last the test of time, I don't really mind how I get to the image in my head and put it onto a piece of paper. As long as I get it there, as long as the end result is what I was looking for, I, I really don't care for being purist about it and, you know, save the white of the paper. Or if I can, then I will. And if I try, like this time, that's exactly what I tried to do. I tried to put masking fluid down to save my whites. But when I took the masking fluid off, it didn't look how I wanted it to. So I did what I could to try and get it back to how I imagined it to be. And that meant colouring the bit I'd masked off and then go back in with white gouache. It looks how I wanted it to look. And to be fair, that's all that matters. As long as the piece you have in front of you is how you wanted it to look. Does it really matter? I don't think so. And there's the finished piece. The writing in the lower left is actually the Latin name for the American Moon Moth. I won't try and butcher the pronunciation today, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe, and in the description box will be links to both my social media accounts and to my website. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below. I'd love to have a chat with you all. I hope you all have a good week, and I'll see you soon.